Alright guys, let's talk about oil pans. So in a factory application, the job of an oil pan is to basically be a receptacle for oil. The oiling system in your engine basically works by drawing oil out of the oil sump, pulling it up into your oil pump, pushing it through the engine, and lubricating all of your bearings, and then it basically squishes out of those orifices and drains back to the oil pan. In most factory applications, as long as it holds an adequate amount of oil and it is able to capture it and keep it in a location where the oil pickup can get it, then it's done its job. However, in a performance application, we have much different requirements. And most of the time we are trying to make as much horsepower as we possibly can. And believe it or not, you can make horsepower with an oil pan. So let's go back to how the oiling system works. After your bearings are lubricated, the oil is shed off of your crankshaft and shed off of your camshaft and it has to drain back to the oil pan somehow. Now oil has weight and that means that as it drains past your crankshaft it can cause additional parasitic losses if you can imagine little droplets of oil draining down. As your crankshaft is rotating it can hit these little droplets of oil and that causes resistance which causes less torque to make its way out the back of the engine. Therefore, if we can deal with those little droplets of oil as efficiently as possible and get them down and out of the way of the crankshaft, we're going to be much better off and it will result in more horsepower production. Now there's been numerous tests done on this in the past. If you guys are fans of the show Engine Masters, which appears on the Motor Trend channel, you will know that they have done uh, actually two episodes on oil pan design. In their first test they compared a stock style oil pan versus a uh, standard sump kick out style oil pan and they found that it gained as much as six horsepower just from having a kick out on the side to help scavenge oil out of the crankcase. Then in their second episode they did a comparison of a aftermarket full length oil pan meaning the sump is the length of the engine with a small kick out versus a better design full length pan that had a much more exaggerated kick out. What they found was there was an additional 25 horsepower that could be gained there. Now they did all of their testing on a non-skirted main and in our case we are dealing with a skirted main. That means that their benefits from a kick out oil pan are probably going to be greater than what ours are going to be but if we saw anywhere north of 20 horsepower that would be amazing. Now the ideal solution to getting the most windage out of the crankcase as efficiently as possible is with something called a dry sump oil pan. In the case of a dry sump oil pan, it is not designed to hold any liquid volume in the pan. Instead, there are some scavenge pumps that are mounted external to the engine, which are designed to draw out any liquid droplets as quickly as possible. And you can see massive horsepower benefits to using this style setup. Now that being said, in the second oil pan engine masters episode, Steve Brule dropped a little knowledge bomb where he stated that they have seen in their testing that a dry sump setup will see zero benefit over a well-designed wet sump pan. So dry sump really is the uh, best solution to the problem, but in our case we didn't want to deal with the extra challenges that come along with a dry sump. Sure it's better for packaging, you can get the engine lower, it's better with slosh control, you can get more oil volume in the system, it will likely be better than any wet sump pan that we can design for a skirted main block, but you have to deal with uh, external belts that are driving oil pumps. It is often hard to find a location for a large enough 
dry sump tank. There is a whole lot more opportunity to have oil leaks because there's just so many more oil connections. And it's just overall a much more complex system and we wanted to kind of keep it simple. So moving to our solution for this problem, I would consider this to be about as good of a wet sump pan as you can get for this particular engine. Now what you're looking at here is a 2006 Vortec 4200 out of a Trailblazer and we were putting it into a Datsun 260Z with two turbos and we're looking to get about seven to 800 wheel horsepower and go really fast in the quarter mile and possibly go land speed racing someday. When we started this project, we didn't really have a uh, particular plan in place for what we wanted to do with the oil pan, but before we got to the oil pan, a fan actually reached out to us and offered some machining services just because he wanted to help out with the project. I want to say a huge thanks to PC Machine Works of Perry, Georgia for helping us make this possible. So here's the oil pan in question. Now our goals with this oil pan were to emulate the Moroso pan that was featured in that Engine Masters episode as closely as possible. Therefore we tried to kick the sides of the oil pan out as much as we could and we tried to make it a full length pan within reason. We didn't want to go completely full length because one, we have a oil filter over here and we wanted to use the factory oil filter. And two, we didn't want to make it so long that controlling oil slosh would be too much of a challenge. Therefore, we chose to do uh, somewhat of a compromise and we did the oil sump about two thirds the length of the engine. So with most kick out style pans, what you deal with is how do you get your bolts in? Just by the nature of the design of a kick out pan, you are taking the sides of the oil pan and pushing them out to the sides of the engine and therefore your bolting face is going to be shrouded by your oil sump. In most cases, what people do is they put little tunnels in the oil sump so that you can install your bolts or they put little plugs at the bottom of the sump so that you can remove the plugs, put your bolts in, and then put the plugs back in. I'm not a big fan of this design because one, you have to make sure that these are very well sealed, and two, 
um, putting a lot of them in the oil pan will likely cause it to warp while welding and therefore a lot of times people put very few of them in their oil pans. In our case we're dealing with a stock block so I also wanted to make sure that we used as many bolts on the original mounting face as possible in order to possibly girdle the block a little bit as you're going to see here a little bit later. Therefore we decided to go with a two-piece oil pan. So let's pop off the lower portion and show you what we got. Like I just mentioned earlier, one of our goals with this oil pan was also to girdle the block. And therefore we went with this two piece style design. Now this upper portion is made out of a one inch piece of 6061 and we made it so that it used all of the original oil pan bolts and hopefully it will girdle the block and keep it from flexing too much. This upper piece also allows us to move the lower oil pan bolting face out around two inches and this is effectively our kick out in the oil pan. So you bolt up this upper piece all the way with all of these bolts up here and then you take your lower piece and you bolt it down over top of it. Additionally you will notice these chamfers on the sides. Those that are not familiar with these engines should know that these little trapezoid shapes along the perimeter of the engine, these are the oil drains from your head. Now the factory oil pans actually have a wall that they put in the oil pan in order to help keep the crank windage away from the cylinder head oil drain and basically allows that oil to drain as effectively as possible. In our case we improved upon that design and we actually hugged the cylinder head oil drains as closely as possible and we put these little chamfers on the side to try and get the oil out and away from the crankshaft as effectively as possible. Now moving on to the lower portion of the oil pan, this mounting face at, that you see here was also machined at PC Machine Works. Big thanks to them. This allowed us to get a very accurate hole drill pattern and make sort of an L shape around the perimeter of the lower oil pan mounting face. Then my dad and I um, fabricated this sheet metal portion that you see here on the bottom and this will act as our wet oil sump. Now there are some additional steps we have to do here yet. We still want to put some baffling in here so that we don't have too much oil slosh and basically we need to keep the oil centered around the oil pickup which will be located in this general area. For this we will be employing trap doors and some walls that we build out of aluminum sheet that will be centered around the oil pickup. Overall I'm extremely happy with how this came out. Um, I gotta say a huge thanks to the guys at PC Machine Works once again. Dave, you rock. Alright guys, so that basically wraps up our video on the ultimate oil pan for your engine. You have to kind of deal with the compromises that your engine presents. And a dry sump isn't always the solution. Now why should you care about making an effective oil pan? Well, one, it's going to help your engine last a whole lot longer. But two, for you stock bottom end guys, it will result in what I call free horsepower. Now there are improvements that you can make to like cylinder head flow and you know boost charge piping efficiency and the likes. This is what I would call not really free horsepower. In the case of those improvements you are getting more air into the combustion chamber and getting more fuel in with your tune of course and this results in a bigger bang in your combustion chamber which puts more stress on your connecting rod and results in more horsepower. These are all great but 
At the end of the day, you're still going to be limited by the strength of your connecting rod. In the case of a improvement to your oil pan, what you are doing is you are reducing the amount of losses due to windage in the crankcase. You're not putting any more stress on your connecting rod and you're able to go much farther with your stock bottom end. Therefore, I call them free horsepower upgrades because they are not putting any more stress on your connecting rod and that's kind of our goal as a stock bottom end enthusiast. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Consider becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below and we'll see you in the next one.